Good morning, family. Wake up, get up, and move in your purpose. God bless you guys this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm thankful today to be here and to be connected and to and to be going to the next level uh, with you. Yes, we're still in our in our closing, finishing strong uh, uh, challenge. We've been challenged to finish strong. And for those that are just coming on board, we work in quarters as we uh, uh, reach our goals in God. And we, we had to break it down, understand that what can you manage in your quarter? Well, in our final quarter, which is the last 90 days, we challenged ourselves to finish strong. Finishing strong first requires acknowledging what you committed to and did not keep by your words. Oh, we always say, this is this is my testimony. This is my resolution. And in finishing strong, you look at, you you, you put that, you put your, your notepad down and you, you make a list of the things that you said, oh, I'm going to do this in January. I'm going to do this in February. I'm going to do this. But, but you, 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 you lost track <laughs> somewhere along the line and you look at the list and we, and we did. And I was to remember, I had three major things that I committed to in the season of 2020 that I had to go and repent about. And I said, Lord, no, 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 I forgive me. I could have done better. So in that, he forgave me and then gave me the strength to finish strong. And I went hard on those three assignments. And before you know it, within two weeks, they were completed. Now, in that point, some people even saw on that list things that weren't God didn't even want you to do in the first place. But you just thought, you just figured, you just, just assumed the things that God would, would, would have you to do in your new season, other than understanding a new season is just that, something never, ever done before. You cannot experience God the same way you did yesterday. Mm -mm. He's a God now. He, he's, a, he's a now re rewarder of, of those who diligently seek him. He is not, he's, he's, it's not a reward you tomorrow or yesterday. Remember, in the principle of seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things will be added unto who? You. Why? Because he already knows everything that you need. He knows everything that 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 uh he that he that he has already put in place for you. Remember, the finished work means just that. That it's already done. If I must continue to remind myself about things that God has already done, then I'm the one behind and God is still moving forward. When? Now. Now is the time that I can achieve, that I can receive, and that I can move into purpose with God. Only now, not later, not tomorrow, <laughs> not yesterday, not tomorrow, not no other time than right now. When is now? Zero to five seconds. When, 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 when is when my mind can grasp and say, oh, I got a now vision to move in now. Not to write the plan for 10 years. You need a right now plan. <laughs> oh my God. You, you have a need a right now plan of not your earthly treasure, but of your treasure in heaven. If he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yes, Hebrews 11 and 6. He is a, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But if you remember in the beginning of one, it first said that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. He didn't say yesterday faith. He said what faith? What faith? Read it right here. Chapter 1 of, of, of Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Visible. Uh, visible. Remember, I always tell you that facts are in rebellion to faith. If it's something that is walking by faith and not by sight, you cannot see it clear. We walk by faith and not by sight. Watch this. By, by, by faith, Abel... By faith, Abel offered to God more excellent sacrifice than Cain, though through which he obtained witness that was righteous. God testified of his gifts and through it, 
he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was translated so that, it, that he did not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had the testimony that he pleased God. But watch this. But without faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that he is that, that he is, and that is he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, you have to change directions on what you're seeking. What is your information pool? What is being downloaded into you? And it's up to you because you're the one that opens up your eye gates, your ear gates, your nose, your mouth gates, and your touch gates. And your sense realm. You are the one who's in control of whether you shut it down or you go forward. Remember, when you let this mind be in you, you had to let it in also. It wasn't just an automatic thing. You had to let it in. But you have to know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But what kind of faith? Now faith. My God, look right here. I'm, look, I'm not making this up. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You better stop looking in the flesh. Here, get this. Let me give you a little bit of this oil this morning. You better stop looking in the flesh and start to really, 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 really perfect the spiritual relationship with God because it opens up sight. It opens up vision. It opens up purpose. That's how you can have familiarity, understanding, revelation, and application in your life is through the spirit and not the flesh. I'm going to let that one settle down for a minute. Because <laughs> it is impossible to please God. You can but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is everything. Not one thing. You must believe God is your everything, even when it's not making sense. Oh, every day we have situations. I don't care how holy and sanctified you are. There are situations that go on in our lives that just don't make sense. Stop trying to. It's not going to work. Don't stop trying to. Get, get, no, 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 no. Stop right where you are. Hit the brakes. And say enough is enough of me trying to make sense of these situations because they just don't make sense. But I tell you all the time, if you just take a little time to look over the circumstance, you see the opportunity to give God by believing that he is. And that is what? And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You don't have to worry about earthly stuff. Okay, watch this. Matthew chapter 6, and we always, everybody runs at 33 and 34, but go back up to 19. Watch this, watch this. Do not lay up, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where the thieves break in and steal. Speaking to somebody this morning, watch this. But lay up your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Hit right there. Stop. What's most important to you? Really? What is the most important thing to you? Does it have anything to do with flesh? Okay, flesh could be children. Flesh could be uh, family, spouses, friends, work, assignments, or earthly assignments, uh, anything physical. What is your most important thing that you embrace? Oh, no, no, you have to ask these well, I have to, but see, see I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot I'm dealing with a bunch of per perfect folks out there that's not working it out daily. Well, I'm working it out daily. And I have to always ask myself the question first, what is your arterial motive, Pastor E? I ask myself that all the time because I need to know what you get, what are you doing this for? And I've and I become accustomed that anything I do 
If anybody out there want to know why Pastor E is doing anything that you see me doing, it's not my will, but it is the will of God. No flesh, no, no, no. Because even though flesh tries to come up, even though flesh is still there, you have to be in control of your flesh. What's the most important thing to you today? Is it anything that has to do with your with your flesh? Because remember, when we are working the 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 the, the when we're working the work, when we're doing the do, when we're doing when we're actually activating the principles of God in our in our lives, it means that we are strengthened through His Spirit. Why do my flesh keep taking over? I'm not saying your flesh ain't gonna come up; it's going to. But why do we have to keep asking the question is why is it taking over? Why is the flesh winning the race? Because you don't have the spirit. If you are strengthened by the spirit, you will be led by the spirit. If you are strengthened by the spirit, you will activate through the spirit. If you are strengthened in the spirit, God, you don't have to worry about the flesh because you can resist. The Bible says if you resist, it will what? Type it in the box. Flee. Somebody needs some stuff to flee off your life today. All you got to do is resist. I know, oh, you thought I can do it for you. <laughs> no, you have to resist. And they'll flee. Who will flee? That inside you, that the one that that flesh part of you that's always getting involved in your business. Oh yeah, we finish it strong. See, if we are not, see you all, we always want the quick fix. We always want to jump over. We always want to get involved and do something. No, no. You better get ready for the new so you can actually stay in the new. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Just say no to yourself. But what is the most important thing to you? Ask that side question. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Hit it. I say it all the time. If you put good in. Come on now. If you put good in, what else will you get? Nothing but good. Here, shower down, Lord. My God. But if you put bad in. Oh no, you didn't do it intentionally. You just happened to be there. No, you didn't. You knew it was not good for you. You have to shut it down. What's most important to you? Watch this. Watch this. But if your eye is bad, the whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Hit the brakes again. You want to do this during your own time and then come to God on what you call his time. Uh uh. God's time must be always. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says that a day, a day to the Lord is a thousand and a thousand is a day. My God. See, see, see. We got to make up some time and stop waiting around. We have to make up some time and stop holding on and move and press towards the mark of the high calling. What is that? Put in good information. You don't have to worry about, I didn't do bad because all I have is good in me. Uh-huh. You put in good, you get good out. My God, watch this. No one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. I'm going to throw this pit. What is most important to you? Uh, uh no, no, see, 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 this is where I want to really challenge you and me. That question should not be nothing to do on the outside because only what you do out is just a product of what's in. The place we have to fix ourselves is on the inside. Greater is he that is in me than the evil that's in the world. And that still has my name on it. My God, 
It, yes, it still has my name on it. When I'm resisting, I'm resisting me. Uh-huh, yes. When I'm serving God, I must die because now I'm serving mammon. That's my name on it. You better take it. You better take personal today. You better make it a, a, a an objective in your life to say, you know what? That's what it really means that I must die so he can live. Paul's, uh, 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 John, 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 John said, increase. That's what he said. But I must decrease. John 3.30. He must increase, but I must decrease. See, that shows me that before God can ever be highly lifted up, I must be highly let down. And I have to do it myself. The, 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 you know, and, and understanding that by me taking back seat doesn't make me any lesser of a believer. What it does is make me the right kind of believer. Because as long as I'm on the back, whereas there's only one way I can go, the Bible says that he will make the first and last and the last first. If I'm already on the back road, where else can I go but to the top? You don't always have to be in control. You don't always have to be the one running your, but you don't always have to be, no, take your position, get in where God called you to be, that you know you're not serving yourself. You are serving God. We cannot serve God. Two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon too. Therefore, I say to you, verse 25, Mark, Mark, Matthew 6, verse uh, 25. It says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than them? I want to just let that one just kind of just rest. How valuable do you see yourself? Uh -uh, no, no, it's still not good enough. How, how, how highly esteemed do you hold your no, I'm still not good enough. Uh-uh, no, no. How important are you to you? Still not good enough. Because it was about your looks, it was about your gifts, it was about that that made you feel important. Oh my God. It was all about the, 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 the how, how, how big houses and how cars and, and all of this stuff. And I'm not knocking you having things because it's a good thing to be a good, hard worker that can now benefit from your labor. Oh my God. But it still has nothing to do with what my most important thing. Everybody asking me, what's most important to you? Because he knows what's most important. He knows your needs. Watch this. Watch this. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns, for yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubic to his stature? Oh, that disease worry can tear some things down. Hmm. And if you just would have gave it to, you know, gave it to God. And when, when, when I say give it to God, that means everything is God's. The Bible tells you everything that was made was made by him, through him. Nothing that was made with, that was made was made without him, Jesus Christ. Go to John 1, read the whole chapter. You'll find it. It won't take long. John chapter 1. You, 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 I, I challenge, you know, if you really want to kind of get into what 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 with the positioning of preparation? John is a very good book. I, I would not hold you back from reading John weekly, chapter a week, constantly. Some books I just read over because new revelation. But now, what is most important, and are you important? Do you think the birds are more important? Do you think the, they're more important? Do you think, well, they got this, they got that. You don't know what goes on behind behind closed doors with all that stuff you may see people have. They owe all of it. 
Can't sleep at night worrying about if that deal is going to come through, if that movie premiere is going to come up. I know you say they made $100 million, but their budget is $2 million. You don't know what people are going on. Now, don't look at the outside of things and think that is success. And know the things that are in you are the success that God wants us all to have. And he wants you to have it right now. Uh-uh, no, 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 right now. No, 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 no. You're ready right now. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Because when you die of self, nothing else matters. <laughs> when you give it all to him, you don't have an input. When you say yes to him and no to everything else, and you better know your yeses must be yes and your noes must be no. Go, go to James 5. Read James 5 and you'll find it. You'll find it. You'll find it. You'll find it. But are you, am I going to do what is required of me right now and get my, and get my values in order? Oh, yes. Because when greater is in me, then I know I'm great because I'm just a mouthpiece. I'm just a servant. I am just a tool. Use me, turn me, click me, do whatever you would have to do for you to get out what you need to get out through me. And I'm willing. Take your little ticket. Come on, let's take a little station break of that emptiness. Come on, get it out. Anything not like you, Lord, take it away. Anything not pleasing, remove it. Anything not like you, I don't want it. And all that had my name on it. Edward, E, e Eddie, uh, all the names I might have been, Pastor, uh, whatever. All them got to go that you can live. Get my priorities in order this morning. I want to get my priorities. Who wants to get your priorities in order this morning? See, when you wake up in your mind, you abide in him, that he abides in you. Anything you ask, it shall be done. When you get up in your thinking, you let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And when you move in your purpose, you still out the way because it says, go ye therefore and make disciples in Matthew 28, teaching them all the things that I've shown. Everything God has done for you is for you to help somebody else. Everything that I do is to help somebody else not have to go through the stuff that I was allowed to go through to have a great option. No, I don't have a story to tell you. No, I don't. I'm not going to get you involved in all that. No, no, I'm not. But what I'm going to do is tell you, if you give God your all, if you diligently seek him, he is a rewarder. But you know, when you seek him, he must be first priority. Yes, 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 yes. When you seek him, he can't be the second option. He can't be the third option. He can't be the fourth option. He must be option number one. Watch this. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is it not more than food than the, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in bars. Yet your father in heaven feeds the... <coughs> excuse me. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you by worry can add one cubic to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the fields, which today is and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Remember, we started out in faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Are your priorities in order? Do you know where to go first? Oh, my God. Thank you. That was a drop from heaven. There are five people listening to me right now live. No, not, not archive, not later. There are five people listening to me right now is that the only reason you have not achieved your goals is because you're asking the wrong person. I see, see, uh, Pastor Marcus Lee out there preaching already before I get there. He know we in Matthew, Matthew 6, 6. But watch this, because it's all going to come together. Your priorities must be in order. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. 
For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. God knows your God knows your need. He knows your He knows your He knows He knows all the equipment you need. He knows all of the 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 uh, the, 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 the the items you need. He knows all the musical stuff you need. Don't you know God has already fixed it for you? You just got to get into fixable position. Uh, you called the wrong number. Uh, I'm going to give you a phone number to call right now. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let me just 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 kind of break this down right here because we always think, well, seek him first. With it. Seeking him first means he is the author and the finisher of your faith. So that means that anything you involve yourself in, he must be the first one you seek. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there's an opportunity down there, but did you seek God about it first? Because all stuff, all, a friend of mine told me last week, all money ain't good money. I'm going to let that one settle down. But when you are making decisions and things come up to you, you have to know that if you go to God first, you don't have to let everybody know, oh, I'm going to pray. Let me pray first. You can be praying right there while them people are talking to you. I do. I'll be looking them eye to eye already in the spirit, saying, Lord, okay, all right. You got me here. I'm here. You told me don't say no to no meetings. You told me to don't turn nobody down. You said give everybody an opportunity, but this ain't adding up. He said, that's why I'm here with you. So you can hear what adds up and what don't. Ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now, you say, what is righteousness? Make it real simple for you. I know you thought it was all, it was all complicated, but let me make it real simple for you to know what righteousness is. When you make right choices, you have now joined the arena of righteousness. You know how to say yes to God and no to everything else, righteousness. You know how to follow him and, 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 and kill yourself, righteousness. You know how to hearken diligently to the word of God and not yourself, that's righteousness. Treating your brother better than you treat yourself. Not looking always out for your own good, but looking out for the interest and the better of others. That's righteousness. See, 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 you have to know when you make right choices, you don't have to worry about nobody saying you made wrong choices. Because when you do right, you will get right. When you do good, you will have no other option but good. Oh my God, when you let the light in, there is no darkness that can take over because the darkness does not comprehend the light, but it will not even try to comp compete with the light. He ain't trying to speed up the process. Because when that light shine, my God, it's all over. You don't have to worry about who's this and who's that. When the light shines, when that true light comes, Jesus Christ is going to shine and all will be blinded. And all is going to have to answer for your either righteous or unrighteous deeds. But as a new covenant believer, it just don't mean that it's showered on you that you're sinless. No, you got to stop sinning. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, Taki. I'm going to lift my... Come on, let's take a station break on that one. L lift your hands and say, shine on me, Lord. I need your light to take all the darkness out of my mind. I'm sick and tired of having darkness it, 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 uh, uh, it infiltrate. I am tired of being contaminated by darkness. You got to let the light in. How? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. My God. And all these things will be added Unto you. Don't worry about, watch this. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Settle down. Throw your weight around. See, let me tell you this right now. 
There's no other time important than right now. Y'all know I'm a now preacher, okay? Now, not our real. Now, zero to five seconds. When? Now, 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 now. Your mind must be, it, it must be exercised. It must be conformed, not to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When? Now, now, now. You got to get your mind right now. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. When? Now faith. See how we tied it in? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the, and the evidence of things not seen. People do not have to see the things that you want God to do for you. Oh, 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 did I bust your bubble that you thought that new car was proving that God had did something for you? Y'all know I tell you all the time, that was your credit. And thank God he made you get your credit in order. But that was your credit that got you that vehicle. Uh-uh, he did not, that, no, he did not come from heaven and build you that house. No, your, your finances, your, your job, your, your credit line got you that mortgage on that house and know you're a, you're a home buyer. You Until you own that property and the land, you are not a home owner. In some states, you'll never be a home owner. You'll, you'll only own the property, but the land won't be yours. You're still renting. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wouldn't try to bust nobody, but let's just keep it real. That was not God, but God gave you the strength uh, to press on. God gave you the strength to seek him first. God gave you the strength for somebody to be hearing in the spirit and say, no, bless them. But but I don't know what they're going to do with it. No, bless them. I, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He, and he always tell me I can say this openly. There are 10 people in my life over my lifetime that God instructed to bless me that are still holding on to that blessing and they can't go no farther because they're holding on to it because they didn't want to be, they didn't, they didn't want it to be like they, it was their doing. Let me tell you this right now. Whatever God is going to do, I don't care if you try to be the bottleneck. I don't care if you try to be the roadblock. God is still going to do what God does when you, oh my God diligently seek him and now you know the reward comes from God not man and where's my reward you might want to ask that question my reward is in my mind because I know how to make right and conscious decisions you, you think these chapters are next to each other for just one reason so you got to go through them in depth I've read these, 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 these scriptures, the, the, the inspired word of God repetitiously because I needed familiarity. I need some understanding. I need some revelation because now I can see the application in it because watch this. If you worry about the day that you have right now, you don't have time to worry about other people and what they're going through. You have to work on you. Watch in verse 7. We're going to close right here. It says, judge not that you be not judged. We don't have to go no farther. See, your mindset should always be working on you that you don't have time to even worry about somebody else. See, when you're worrying about the physical things, you're worrying about, why Pastor E got that? Why they get this? Why they always? Because I pray they're doing the work. That's why they're out there doing what they do. Ain't nothing for free. Nothing. Stop thinking it is. And if you stay connected with me, I'm going to keep inspiring you. That ain't nothing for free. You have to go to work. And you got to go to work right now. So you may be that one person out there. And that's what these broadcasts are all for. Just one. If one leaves here different than you came, I've done my job. But for that person out there that's like, you know, it's just not... He's talking to you. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And you can fix it right now. I don't care if you just came. If you're in a, if you laying there in sin right now and you just happen to be watching through your Facebook page, you got your earphones on, people are around you. They don't know why you're crying. They don't know why you, why you see them emotional and stuff. They ask you what's going on and you're putting your hand up saying, leave you alone because you need this right now because God is calling your name. And he's saying, child, I will forgive you, but you got to ask <laughs> 
Oh, I pray in the name of Jesus you receive this. All you have to do is ask him. And I know it gets complicated, but watch it. It can be just as simple as this because I'm not perfect. Lord, I messed up. <laughs> I dropped the ball. I dropped the ball. Forgive me. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I, I, I didn't stop what I said I was going to stop. I'm continually doing the same old thing. Lord, forgive me. I, I, I misled myself. But today, I want to be free, Lord. And I, I, by being free, I, I, want to, I want to ask you to forgive me of my unrighteousness. And in forgiving me, give me the strength, Lord, to forgive everybody and release them and let them off the hook today. I no longer blame you for this. I no longer cause you for that. I no longer badger you for that. Forgive me for putting you through hell on earth. Forgive me. Because I've forgiven you. If you thought I was upset with you, if you thought I did, you did something wrong to me, if you did do something wrong to me, I forgive you. I truly forgive you. Because I need to be free and free indeed. Then, Lord, I'm back. And I'm still working on it because I need some phone calls to make. I need to write some letters. I need to have some interaction with family. I need to tell the truth. I need to let it out the bag. But now I'm coming back to you and say, forgive me of all my sins. I confess that I was, that I, yeah, I was wrong. I confess that I was, no, I was no good. I confess it right now. And I ask you to forgive me that I will have the strength, Lord, to never sin again. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I confess right now that you are Lord of Lord, King of Kings, the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. The, 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 that you are Jesus, the name that every knee will bow. You are Jesus that every tongue will confess. And from this day forward, I will press toward the mark of the high calling. I won't look back. I'm drawing my line right now of the no return, and I want to be in you. I glorify you today. I magnify you today. And my life will never be the same. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. It was that simple. And do it your own way. Make it that simple. Communicate with him. And watch him communicate back with you. But we're, now that you're free, you can now put principles in your life. You can now put structure in your life that you will not go back. If you're out there and you need somebody to connect to, here I am. Send me a message on Messenger. Any of our ministers throughout this, we have plenty of ministers and pastors and prophetesses and prophets and on the line right now. If you see somebody on there that has a title and you want to connect with them, reach out, message me, uh, call me on the hotline, 213-595-7591, 213-595-7591. We will connect with you. We'll get you connected to a, a Bible-believing church in your area. We know some, I guarantee you, I know somebody where you are. And if I don't, I'm going to meet somebody where you are and I'm going to find you somebody that I trust because of the spirit of God that will lead and guide you to you having a stronger relationship with Jesus. Done, finished, and complete. Amen. Wake up in your mind. Get up in your thinking and move in your purpose. Now, I want to open up the portion room right now. The portion room for you, those of you that don't know what it is, is a place that we we came, we, we just were talking one day. We're like, we just want to give more, Pastor D. want to give more. And the Lord said, uh, I'm going to let you guys get make a portion room. I said, okay, portion room. He said, yep, that's where y'all give with no return. He said, y'all want to come become better givers? He said, I'm going to show you how to do it. Give here. It is no return. No acknowledgement. If your, if your offering was uh, was responsible for somebody being changed, rearranged, and transformed, you ain't going to get credit for it. <laughs> I sold everything I have right now. Anything you were going to bless me, I, I give it freely. I give it freely. No name on it. No, 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 no contract on it. I give it freely. Lord, remove anything that's not pleasing to you and take everything else. I can, I, can, I can carry whatever burden I have right now that someone else can be blessed, that can, someone else can be healed, that someone can be transformed by the renewing of their minds. Now, I'm working on my million man, million, oh, that was so I got to work on that one, on the million mind move. 
We're working on that right now. We're pulling in the minds of my district. Come on back. Bring the minds back to Christ. No more insanity. No more mind disease. No more brain contusions. Oh my head, that shined up. No more insanity in the name of... I gotta pull a big one in there. It's a big one. It's a big one. Ah! In the name of Jesus. I love you guys. Wake up in your mind. Get up in your thinking and move in your purpose. Now, I think believe we're in day 42, Minister Terry. She's the, she got to keep up with the days. Uh, she'll type that in there for anybody in there. But as we're finishing strong, remember, we only have about 12 more days in this in, in, in this section of our 90-day finishing strong that we're, 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 we're getting it all out. Anything not like us, anything not like him, we get it out. That we can be filled in the name of Jesus. Yes, we want to pray over gun killings. It's, I mean, it, murder is, is rapid over our country. But I'm telling you, it's because of the mind. These pills and these medications these kids are on. This ADA, ADDDDD, ADFD, or whatever it is, medication. They take that and they all over the place. I mean, it's it's the it's the mind that's under attack. And the enemy's working, he's he doing it, he try, he pulling, he look, if, if he can't get you, he's taking out as many as he can. We're in day 49, so that means we got about 11 days left in this section, and then we're going over to pre preparation. Getting our vessels ready to go over to the other side. Oh, my God. Oh, that crossover revival is going to be an awesome experience. If you want to be involved, I need you to reach out to me. Let me know. Next, Starting next month, I'll be calling personal phone calls. Okay, can you take this time spot? Can, you going to be involved this year. I, I'm, I'm expecting and hoping everybody will come on in uh, uh, voluntarily, which I know you will, but somebody needs, some people just need the phone call. We'll be doing that, but we need you to get your time into me so I can start making the flyer, get some faces in there. And getting you connected uh, with uh, what music you want playing, getting everything in order so we have everything decent and in order. Amen. Wake up in your mind. Get up in your thinking and move in your purpose. Family, I'll talk to you on Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Central, and 12 noon on the East Coast. Well, wake up, get up, and move in your purpose. Love you guys. Oh, Facebook, you know, I'm, I'm going to always continue to shout out everybody on here by name. Mr. Terry, good morning. Minister Allen Washington, good morning. Minister Shan Shannon Jones, good morning. Minister Natasha Trahan, good morning. Uh, Minister Marcus Lee, Pastor Marcus Lee. Minister Taki Barra, what's up, my sister? Pastor BJ White, good morning. Elder Carlos Epinger, what's up, my bro? How you doing? Minister Tris, Trinisa Cullis Cyphus. I hope I said that right. Good morning, Minister. How are you? Minister Walter Curry Jr., good morning. Minister Kyle Michael Allen, good morning. Mr. Paulette McCoy, good morning. Mr. Sonny James, good morning. Minister Jashida Massenberg, good morning. Minister Ernest King, good morning. Minister Dorothy Ramey, good morning. Minister Jacqueline McKinney, good morning. Prophetess Taryn, good morning. Minister Cheryl L. Bernie, good morning. Minister Rhonda Matthews, good morning. Prophetess Denise Smith, good morning. Minister Nicole Mitchell, good morning. Minister Leonard Roth, good morning. Good, good morning to everybody. God bless you guys. And stop watching free porn. <laughs> we got to make a shirt, uh, Marcus. We got to put some kind of campaign together. Stop watching free porn. <laughs> amen, amen. Thank you, Minister Terry. That was a good word. And I'll be honest with you this morning. We were rushing getting in here and, and we knew where we were and where God was taking us, but we did not know. And you know, that's probably every day. Uh, we don't really map out or write a, a schedule of what we're doing. We just go and let the Lord use us. But that was straight from the hip there. 
And uh, I pray that it all came together and it was formated in three portions, you know, three formatted. It was getting you enough scripture and a great, a, enough content that you leave this place different than you came. Change, rearrange, and transform by the renewing of your mind. I love you, family. God bless you guys. Talk to you on Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Central, and 12 noon on the East Coast for Wake Up, Get Up, and Move in Your Purpose. Love you guys.